Hello and welcome to 6.5 on the road and we're at AWS reInvent 2024 here in Las Vegas. Uh, my name is Diane Hinchcliffe. I'm VP of CIO Practice for the Futurum Group and we have with us AWS's uh, Matt Yantichin. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for having me. So, um, you're Mr. Marketplace. Uh, I'd love for you to kind of tell us your, your role at AWS and walk us through uh, what you're doing right now. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, thanks for having me today. Uh, Matt Yantrishan, a lot of people call me Matt Y. Yeah. Uh, I'm the Vice President of AWS Marketplace and Partner Services, and I like to say that that is a portfolio of, as we call them, services or products that allow customers to do business with AWS partners and that allow AWS partners to do business with, uh, with AWS. Yeah, well, it's a, um, you know, it's the digital channel of, of the future for enterprise software. Yeah. Uh, software of any kind, really, right, we're talking about. Um, Yet it still seems like a lot of people aren't fully aware of them. I mean, everyone knows about the Apple App Store, but they don't know about AWS Marketplace as much as you might think. Um, yet, uh, Marketplace is exploding. Uh, cloud Marketplaces in general are doing really well. Why do you think that is? Walk us through kind of your front row seat on that. Yeah, I mean, like you heard Ruba say in her keynote yesterday, uh, over 99% of AWS's top 1,000 customers are using the AWS Marketplace. So it may not be well known enough. I mean, I of course want more customers using Marketplace, but when it comes to you know the big power users, all of them are using Marketplace almost without exception, and we're seeing a lot of long tail growth as well. So it's definitely been exploding. I, I, I've been with AWS for 12 years, but I've been in this role for, for the last two years, and in, in those two years, I've definitely seen it sort of really, really take off across all customer segments. So you're right. It's a uh, it could be more well known, but it is exploding in, in all dimensions. Well, and and maybe uh, bring it to life with some numbers, so people so people understand what we're talking about here. We're talking billions in revenue mm -hmm. uh, going through marketplace every year um, uh, to ISVs who are putting their solutions in the marketplace. Uh, and how many solutions are out there uh, now in marketplace? Yeah. So first of all, it's not just software. You know, obviously that's what's powered yeah, us, and that's how we got our start. It's software and data and services, what we call professional services, people services. And we sell all three through the marketplace, mm -hmm. which is differentiating and, and has been one of the key growth drivers for us. Uh, there's about 20,000 public listings, and almost all of our listings are public on, on the marketplace today from over 4,000 vendors. And I, what's interesting when you think of the growth, uh, some of those vendors, some of those sellers, the, the, the partners selling on marketplace, have now cleared uh, over a billion dollar each individually. In fact, I just talked to a partner last individually, night. Individually, individually. What impressive. that means is yeah. total contract value transacted through the marketplace. I talked to a partner last night um, who's now in the in the many multiples of billions and billion in year. So we have partners now doing hundreds of millions, if not billion dollars, of total contract value through the marketplace every year. And so that kind of gives you an idea of the, the size and scope uh, that we're seeing. So that doesn't sound uh, just like small and medium-sized businesses using Marketplace because they don't really have an IT department. That sounds like you're doing real enterprise sales as well. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, enterprise sales and more specifically SaaS private offers. Uh, so software as a service, and what I mean by private offers is where there are custom terms, custom prices, you know, as enterprises like to buy. Well, high-end enterprise software is sold that way. And yeah. unless you have that, you actually can't sell to the Marketplace because you're, you're crafting a special deal with their special needs in it, right? So Yeah, you know, enterprises like to say nobody buys list. <laughs> What's interesting is people do buy list. Yes. And, and what we see is very healthy uh, self-service or, you know, people buying the list price business complementing a really strong private offer business. And, and that's been one of the nicest things about, for me, discovering about reInvent is, yes, on the high end, these enterprises buying primarily SaaS private offers is, is the growth driver from a revenue perspective. Mm -hmm. But from a volume perspective, like number of customers, number of deals, um, the self-service and, and the smaller private offers is actually the bulk of the volume, the overwhelming bulk of the volume. And even large enterprise buyers, you mentioned app stores, mm -hmm. um, and you have this whole generation of people who are now uh, CIOs, CISOs, uh, chief mm -hmm. procurement officers, yep who are the app store generation. You know, yes. they were millennials, et cetera, and they, they're used to this, like, go on my phone, get an app, and immediate sort of availability. And they've it's taken that same- It's a consumption model, they understand. Right? Yeah, 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 and they've taken that same buyer behavior and, and brought it to their role now as senior executive, line of business buyer, and sometimes all the way up to the C-suite. And I think we're seeing that now reflected in even enterprise buying motions. Yeah, well, you said that, that private offer, I think, was a really sign of maturity for solutions like AWS Marketplace. Uh, this allows you to tackle the high end of the enterprise market. Uh, you're saying, actually, the, the bulk of the market period, right, is, yeah, yeah. are those deals. Um, and I'm seeing um, the, uh, like I was talking to when your your uh, partner dinner is a, a small little SaaS company, though they have grown into a 50 person company by using AWS Marketplace as the channel. That's their only growth channel. So they, and then just, you know, like, they've been growing in leaps and bounds entirely to the fire hose that that gives. Yeah. Um, it, and I think these are good proof points for AWS Marketplace, but um, 
where next? I mean, what, in terms of what are, the, what are the trends right now you guys are trying to tap into with the marketplace going beyond this kind of private offer? Yeah, well, the trends are being driven by some of those um, startups, you know, these sort of incumbents, these insurgents mm -hmm. that you're seeing sort of start to uh, grow rapidly, like Archera or Drada. Like Drada has over 40% of all of their business. They're, they're a relatively small startup. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they're still getting started. 40% of their business driven through the marketplace. Companies like Archera that, and even Pinecone, if you look on the AWS Marketplace oh, website today, mm -hmm. and you see the top four sellers, like we have sort of, you know, what's working well, top four, just public. And Pinecone is sitting there alongside like Snowflake and Databricks. But what, what they're driving, and I think is a really interesting phenomenon, kind of goes back to what you were saying before around private offer versus self-service, is a, the most successful partners, large and small, are having a product-led growth motion on the front end. You know, it could be self-service, mm -hmm. but like a SaaS-free trial or like request a demo or some type of a thing that is on their public listing that actually fuels at like the top of the funnel for a private offer motion on the back end. And they're doing what I call like a hybrid sales motion, PLG plus sort of enterprise private offer. Mm -hmm. And all, without exception of the top, um, sellers are using that motion to sort of drive new business through a PLG motion and then capture or transact the, the bigger deals through private offers. And to be successful, you kind of, it's an and, you have to do both. So that, that's one trend. Mm -hmm. The second trend is kind of old as new again. You know, we started the marketplace as self-service software transactions and we then added private offers and then we added channel and channel partner private offers. And then we added yeah, distribution nice. partner. So we're almost working in reverse. Like we're now adopting more traditional Sales Getting back channels. into the old world, yeah. Yeah, right. and, and reseller resells growing faster than direct in all regions globally now for us when it comes to channel partner private offers through marketplace and increasingly distribution partners like Ingram Micro are doing totally innovative stuff like integrating with buy with AWS um, as part of this week's announcement. So we're seeing the channel embrace marketplace and we're embracing the channel in a way that you know is like I said eclipsing direct sales in all regions. So how does that, uh, just for the, those that might be using those more traditional channels, how does that kind of relationship work between you guys and, and the traditional channel? Um, are you kind of frenemies or are you finding out that you're actually just, you know, tremendously, tremendously able to collaborate and cooperate there in a way that you couldn't before? I mean, channel partners like you know, Presidio has been really successful with us mm -hmm. or CDW and their amazing recent acquisition of Mission Cloud and Ingram Micro. Uh, you know, a few years ago, we, we didn't have as deep relationships with those partners, um, especially the DISTs, but also the, the one tier, the resellers. Uh, and it's really come around because I think we see that um, we need them and they need us and we can be more successful together for customers. Customers want choice. Like I, I was just meeting with um, a very successful security partner just a few minutes ago before I sprinted over here. <laughs> and they are a classic example. Like they, in some countries they have a direct motion, in some countries they have a one tier, like a sort of classic resale motion. Mm -hmm. And in other countries like Japan, they have a, a two tier motion, you know, through the, big, the yep. big distribution partners and their associated channel partners. And that's the reality for global companies. And this is a four year old startup and they're going to motion direct one tier, N tier. Um, and so in order for us to serve our joint customers, their customers effectively, we need to do all three as well. Like I need to support distribution partners. I need to support a resale motion and I need to support a direct motion in different parts all over the world. So I think it's the reality of um, the growth of our partners and of marketplace, the maturity of the market, where our buyers are internationally, how they're buying. Um, and you know, it's sort of, we're adjusting to the customer need, I guess. Well, and it really strikes me when you say all these things uh, that uh, this is how customers work, but I also assume that you mean that AWS Marketplace works in all the, three of those different ways. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. So we have channel partner private offers for the one tier motion mm -hmm. resellers. We have uh, something called the designated seller of record program for uh, distribution motion and the N tier motion. We have multiple layers, distribution partner, channel partners, resellers, and you know, the customer. We support always. It's really about this whole customer choice. Like, hey, you tell us how you want to buy customer partner, you tell us how you want to go to market in X country for this segment, and we'll do it. So we, we support all of those. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Well, I want to get to the buy uh, AWS news and have you walk us through that, but uh, you really highlighted a, a key point. It's something that came up in my conversations here at reInvent uh, this week, and that is, as you've been kind of moving into the more traditional space, uh, you have salespeople, channel partners, and a bunch of people who don't know how to actually work with it, the digital marketplace. Yeah. Uh, what are your uh, do you have any challenges there of providing uh, education and training? Uh, are they coming to you saying, look, I need you to get my sales teams over on this because this is much faster and easier way of working? Yeah, well, I mean, there's two things. I mean, um, yes, there is There's definitely a training and enablement that needs to happen, but there's also some realities about, like you, you just mentioned this, meeting customers where they are. Like a line of business buyer in say, like what we would call an uh, SMB small customer buying their video conferencing software and like their desks, <laughs> you know, for, they're, they're they're buying from a distributor. They they probably don't have a, a AWS account. It's not their job. Like they're not the one provisioning cloud workloads. Mm. And so I think 
that persona, we need to meet them where they are and sell through, mm -hmm. in this case, the distribution channel. Um, and similarly, the person buying like their ERP uh, in the cloud, or I was talking to healthcare, like their healthcare system uh, for, for their hospital, that persona, again, is not necessarily the same person buying like mm -hmm. S3 on AWS, right? And so we need to meet them in the right way as well. So as different new personas arrive at AWS to come by through the marketplace, and we need to meet them where they are in, in the right channel and in the right venue. And so that's a big part of why we came out with Buy with AWS, because it's sort of unrealistic. We're going to hinder our growth if we limit the buying and discovery experience to the walls of AWS and more specifically like the AWS Marketplace website. So we wanted to bring the products in Marketplace to more people, more personas mm -hmm. yep. through more channels. And that was the whole sort of nexus of, the, or the genesis rather, of Buy with AWS. Well, yeah, and it's all about, I think the vision from Marketplace was all about removing the friction and how do you how do you work with AWS and its, and its partners. Um, so it leads us right to uh, probably the big, biggest marketplace news of the week, which is buy with AWS. Can you walk us through it, unpack it for us? Why is it so important? Yeah, yeah. So w when I took this role uh, a couple of years ago, and um, you know our, our marketing and analyst people here in the room will laugh as I say this. Uh, I used to I was testing sound bites, and and one vision I had was, hey, I, I want to be everywhere internationally. I want to be uh, everywhere in terms of uh, meeting customers where they are in different segments, different buyers. Mm -hmm. And so it sort of led me to start saying hey, let's put Marketplace everywhere. And we were doing this to a degree. Like for years, we've had Red Hat Enterprise Linux and SUSE Linux in the EC2 console, for example. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, and we launched uh, EKS add-ons. So in our Kubernetes service, you can now discover and deploy and buy uh, Kubernetes adjacent technologies to cool. deploy yeah. into your Kubernetes console. And this was meeting the Kubernetes admin where they are in the Kubernetes console. So mm -hmm. we said, hey, you know, there's something to this. Like, exposing Marketplace, both the discovery and the buy motion outside of the AWS Marketplace website itself. And it par in parallel, we were building all these APIs because historically Marketplace didn't have APIs, it was a website. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing now is turning Marketplace into more of an API-driven platform that can power a number of customer experiences in different oh, places. Oh yeah, and enterprises want to put all that stuff that's in Marketplace in their service catalogs in things like ServiceNow, right? They don't. Well, ex exactly, exactly. So whether it's putting it in ServiceNow or you know in your punch out, a rebuild Koopa system or whatever the case may be, how can we use our APIs to expose Marketplace, the discovery, the, the, the trying, the buying, the configuration, wherever it needs to be. And so that's what Buy with AWS is. It, it's not just a button, it's a set of capabilities. It's all of Marketplace's capabilities eventually mm -hmm. exposed through our APIs and then in turn exposed anywhere. So ISVs like Databricks have done in-app upgrades uh, using Buy with AWS, so you can try it and then say, hey, do you want to buy this with AWS without ever leaving Databricks, like the product? Well, you so you have there. an experience, yeah. you know, a Buy with AWS experience that you can put anywhere. Is that what I'm hearing? That's exactly okay. right. So we're basically opening the walls, we're federating the, mar the mm -hmm. marketplace experience. And so uh, uh, someone like a distribution partner we were talking about, like Ingram Micro, they have their XVantage Cloud Marketplace. They can now expose a subset of our of our catalog that corresponds to their channel partners and the software that Directly they sell in, what they have. in their yes. catalog, right? right. So, because that's where like those buyers I mentioned, those line of business assessment buyers, they're showing up there. So let's meet them there. And, and I think it's sort of a, anyone who knows me will know I'm a very pragmatic Canadian and it's pragmatic. It's, hey, like, where are your customers? Where can we help best sell with them? Where can we help enable them? Let's use our APIs to expose marketplace there. Is it another AWS service console? Great. Is it a third party website? Awesome, let's do that. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, AWS Marketplace um, uh, uh, partners can use this, put this experience in, in other places where they might only have just had buying content before they can actually put the buying experience. Is that right? They can create their yeah. own customer experiences, yeah. and not just buying, uh, like discovering, uh, trying, buying, and also, also it's most of the, the the purchasing journey then. So it's yeah, the discovery to like what we launched with Databricks this week. Okay. Like there's the post purchase configuration, which is so important, because like yep. a huge percentage but of customers buy that, something yeah. and then never use it. It sits on the shelf. So how can we help customers derive value out of what they bought? So that too, like how so can we- So even customer success. success exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Very, very interesting. Uh, well, congratulations on that news. Um, Thank you. I, I think that you know, all of it shows the, the amazing journey and the maturity and proof points that AWS Marketplace has gone through over the last, I've been tracking you guys for like 10 years now. Has it kind of been that long? Yeah, it has, yeah, 12 I think, yeah. Uh, but we'd be remiss without talking about the hottest topic of the of the year of the show, uh, and that is generative AI. Yeah. Uh, and so I was wondering, you know, what does uh, generative AI mean for AWS Marketplace? Is it creating opportunities for you? What should we know about it? Yeah, so I mean, I guess there's two sides to this. There's how can we help 
you know, through our own services and, and other services, AWS services, get generative AI into the hands of customers in a useful way. So Bedrock Marketplace launched this week, and that's oh, powered I saw that. by oh, AWS Marketplace. I said, I said that is probably the big, one of the biggest news. People don't understand how big that is. Totally. Yeah, there's like over 100 foundation models now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, expanding the existing third-party foundation models in Bedrock now in the Bedrock console. But what's cool about that is that's powered by Marketplace. That's part of the Marketplace yeah, Everywhere strategy. I didn't know that. So it really so, is part of all, okay. Part yeah, of the those same are platform. SageMaker Jumpstart models, which are mm -hmm. the market, like we have a machine learning model Marketplace. It's a subset of that in Bedrock. So that's actually a manifestation of Marketplace Everywhere. Let's bring yeah, more you know, third-party partner software, in this case models, to customers in the right place, the Bedrock console. So that's a great collaboration with yeah, our team. Right. Um, so there's, that's how we're bringing like machine learning to more people and, and AI, ML in general, including but not limited to Gen AI. But there's also how we use it. So, you know, for example, I use generative AI to scan my entire product catalog to look for exaggerated claims in product listings automatically. Yeah, interesting. Like, does, does it do what it says in the box? Mm -hmm. So we do that now. We use it for case triage and answering 100, 200 level questions for marketplace support. Um, we just launched Partner Connections, which is a new multi party collaboration feature in Partner Central, one of the other services I lead. And we use um, AI in that case, to uh, powered by Bedrock, to auto recommend partners for other partners to work with. So, hey, ISV, here's a services partner that might help you in this customer opportunity. We make those sort of matchmaking, we automate that. So we're using actually, we're, we're you know eating, what do you say, drinking your own champagne. That's right. We're, we're, we're using Q and Bedrock in partner assistant. We use Q um, for business, the chatbot. We have a number of features like chat, recommendations, powered by our own AI services, in addition to what we're doing to help our own AI services get to more customers with partners. Yeah, so it's not like you're, you're improving not only the AWS marketplace uh, capabilities themselves and increasing quality and things like that, but you're actually using it to service customers as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, everyone always asks me, you know, how are people using marketplace, or sorry, generative AI in production? And I have like real examples in my team. Like at this stage, we have five or six significant uh, features and initiatives and ways we're meaningfully using Gen AI in production in my own services. Yeah, and, uh, and hopefully you can answer this question, but I think it's an important distinction, and that is, if a model gets into uh, into bedrock, that means it meets some certain minimum requirements to do that, uh, it should, and it should be there, uh, and you guys will, will indicate that. It's a safer way of more consistently consuming enterprise AI models. I think just going grabbing things out there and putting them in your, uh, in your enterprise uh, Bedrock gives this kind of quality assurance um, and this safety and maybe some guardrails. It, it, is, it, is that a true statement? Or? Yeah, well, in fact, you use the exact perfect name of the feature, yeah. which is Bedrock Guardrails. So there's the, the features of the service itself with guardrails, but you're right. One of the nice things about Marketplace Everywhere and how we're exposing uh, partner products, in this case, foundation models, through other AWS services, is they can curate. So in Bedrock's case, there are over 100 foundation models, but it's a curated set. There are 100 yes, foundation right. models that they have tested, that they have tried. You're not just letting anyone list there. You are deliberately uh, um, curating them one by one. Yeah, because customers want choice, but we also hear customers say like, hey, there are a lot of small and large language models out there. Which one should I use? And it's like, well, here's a set to start with. You know, there are thousands. Here's like just over 100 that you know we know work really well with Bedrock. You can use Bedrock for the inference with these, mm -hmm. and they'll, yep. they'll work well. And so that, you know, finding that right balance between customer choice and and helping customers make the, the right decisions for their business, that, that's what we're trying to do there. Well, and it's particularly since you know I work primarily with chief information officers, they are aware that AI is an extremely powerful tool and it has loaded with all thing, all kinds of concerns around you know touching PII, uh, hallucinations, accuracy, uh, and yet they're trying to put it in the core of their business. So what really strikes me is AWS Marketplace is, is now empowering through the Bedrock Marketplace the ability to adopt AI more consistently and safely. You can go faster without worrying about blowing your leg off type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, I hope that doesn't happen. We, it, both in Bedrock and let's not forget SageMaker, you know, SageMaker Jumpstart as well. So, you know, both on the the, the training and the fine tuning side of it uh, with, with SageMaker and then on the inference side with Bedrock, I think providing partner third party solutions in both of those places for customers, in addition directly through Marketplace, you can, you know, discover the SageMaker models directly in the Marketplace, that gives uh, again, you're meeting different personas in each place for different use cases, whether it's training or inference or other things. So helping customers find the right thing for the right purpose mm -hmm. is, is really important. And again, it's a rapidly changing uh, environment, a lot of different technologies, so the ability to quickly find and try the new thing. You know, like myself, we, we were using a previous version of Anthropic Cloud, experimented uh, with Llama from Meta, mm -hmm. uh, using 3.5 Cloud and some of the latest features. You know, again, we're drinking our own champagne there. We're actually leveraging that choice as well for our own services to find the right tool uh, for, for the particular task we're trying to solve. All right, well, thanks, Matt, for stopping by and sharing us uh, all the news with AWS Marketplace. We appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, thanks for your time. Great questions.